What is up everybody, it is Life's Apprentice. Well today, um, I've been kind of awaiting this job um, because I feel like it's a perfect opportunity to show you guys how to install a metal roof. So that's what today's video is gonna be about. We're gonna do an in-depth um, install on a pretty simple metal roof. Um, it's about 24 feet by 16 feet, and I would guess it's a 612 pitch. Um, we're gonna be installing just a um, these are from Menards, a Pro Rib three foot metal panel. Um, all of the stuff that I have here is stock, um, stock colors and stock flashings. We have our um, Eve flashing right here. We have our rake flashing right here, our ridge right here, our panels, our closures, um, and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna get into how to install this metal roof and we're going to start with uh, the eave trim down here and uh, just kind of kind of work our way around this roof now i'm doing this completely by myself um, so if you guys were to be doing this by yourself on your garage um, you can do it and i'll show you how now one thing that we're going to do that may be undesirable to some is we're going to shingle directly over the top of the asphalt shingles um, you guys can put felt down, tar paper down, um, like quarter inch insulation down. You can put um, boards across there to get it off of the shingles. You guys can do whatever you want to do as far as that goes. We are going to be going directly on top of the asphalt shingles, seeing as this is just a shed. First flashing here is um, what we're going to be using for an eave flashing. It's going to go right here, just like this. Um, you guys may or may not be able to get this exact flashing. Um, flashings for these metal roofs are gonna vary a little bit. But you're gonna wanna make sure you have something um, down here at the base. Now, keeping in mind with everything that we do um, when it comes to roofing and siding and stuff like that when we're installing our pieces and we have laps in the pieces we want to start at the back and work our way to the front so that those laps are hidden um, and then for screwing this in I'm just using it like it's a two inch or an inch and three quarter just drywall nail or screw we want to make sure this is nice and tight and we're going to get some screws in I'll try to make sure that those are flush i'll show you that in just a minute you can see um, i'm going about every foot maybe 16 inches with the screws um, and then we will put colored screws down in here to hold this edge um, but i'm going to continue screwing that and uh, i left that piece I didn't cut it yet, but I left that just a little bit long. So I left it hang over about an inch um, longer than the edge of the shingles. I can always cut some off and I just don't want to be short. So for now, I left it just a little bit long over there. So the next part, we have this screw down with the drywall screws. The next part and the majority of what holds the roof on are these quarter inch pull barn screws is what they call them. And these are color match to the color that we're using there's lots of different colors and then they have a neoprene washer right here um, and that is what uh, will help waterproof them now these washers do wear out over time um, but this is uh, the way that this roof goes together because this is an exposed fastener metal roof so these because these will not be seen when our panel goes over the top of it. These are going to go into this part to hold this into the fascia um, or gutter, depending on um, what you have. And if you have a gutter, you, you may have to take the gutter off in order to, um, to put these in. Now I'm just using a quarter inch runner, just like this. 
and uh, we're gonna put these about every two feet. And there you have that. Now you can put these as far apart or as close as you would like. Um, it really depends on your situation and everything like that, but uh, we're gonna go about every two feet with these. This is a 12 foot piece. So this will have six in it, at least six, maybe seven um, with the end pieces or the end screws. So we're gonna do that quick. I think you guys get the gist of it. We're gonna have one here and one there, and we're gonna have one there and there and there. You guys got to see um, the ridge, or not the ridge, but the uh, the eave flashing. And I just left that long. I never cut any of these pieces at all. So that piece is hanging off by about two feet. Um, I did my lap here of about two inches. Um, in my opinion, you don't need to caulk um, this lap. You can if you would like to, um, but water flow should take care of it. And then we have the top screwed with drywall screws. You could use roofing nails for this too. I like the idea of screws because they shouldn't back uh, back out like a nail might. And then we have about every two feet um, screws down under here. We need to make sure that we have the right length of metal roofing um, for what we're using it. Now, a lot of times you're gonna have to special order your, um, your metal and you're gonna have to order it to length. Now when you do that, you gotta be very, very careful because you cannot make these any longer. You can only make them shorter. Um, so I'm gonna get a measurement here. I know roughly what it was, but I'm gonna double check. And then what I bought is just a standard 10 foot panel. So this is 120 inches. And if my memory is correct, I believe I need 116, something like that. Um, so I'm gonna have to cut down all of my panels um, So I'm gonna get a measurement and I'm gonna show you how I cut them down and then how I um, Lay out where my screws are gonna go. I've determined um, 116 is tight and I don't want my panels to go all the way to the very peak of the ridge and With the ridge, it's like 10 inches by 10 inches. So I have a little bit of leeway um, so I went 114 and I drew a line. Now I have the entire roof, this side of the roof, there's eight panels. Every single one of them is in this pile. So I'm gonna cut all of them at one time, um, ideal. So the panel's actually gonna stick past the eave trim about um, an inch and a half. And then I'll be about two inches short of the very, very peak of the ridge. Um, you guys can run it as tight up there as you want or I mean, in reality, with the size of this ridge, you could probably go six inches um, lower even than I am. So we have, let me move this. We have just a Sharpie line. We have eight panels here. We made sure that they are all even in the stack so that one isn't gonna be shorter or longer than the other. And then we're gonna take a grinder with a cutoff wheel. Um, I've been told that you're not supposed to cut it this way but I've been cutting metal panels with grinders and stuff like that for years. The one thing you do wanna make sure, and the reason why a lot of people say you shouldn't cut with this is because when you cut this end, um, this end is gonna be exposed and is gonna be likely to rust because of the way that we're cutting it. So what I do is, and you can't always do this, but what I do in this case is I will take this end of the panel and it's gonna go up underneath the ridge so it will never see, um, in theory, it will never see any rain or moisture. So you don't wanna cut this and have this as your bottom edge here. Um, you want the nice clean factory edge down at the bottom where you're gonna see it. And then this cut edge is gonna go up underneath the, uh, the ridge up there.
Oh, that blade's gone. Didn't go exactly how I was planning it. Um, I had a little bit of issues, but I bought plenty of extra. But the problem is, is once this thing gets down a ways, unless it's like brand new, um, it didn't cut all of them at once. So, but that's a really nice, easy way to cut it. Um, in my opinion, if you were to do all these by hand, it would take way longer. Um, and those grinding wheels are cheap. I got like 10 of them just for this job. And it's like, I don't know, they're only like a buck or two a piece. So to cut those eight panels, half of the roof, I went through two of my, uh, my wheels there so we have them cut down to length now one thing that we need to do is we need to establish where do we want to screw the panels and how do we want to screw the panels so when you look at the panel this is going to be the bottom right here um we know that we're going to have like a one and a half inch overhang there and we have our closure one of these that will go underneath right here to close off all of these from um, you know bats and birds and all that kind of stuff bees especially so we know that here we're gonna have an inch and a half of overhang then we're gonna have our closure and we don't really want to screw directly into the closure so we're gonna go about four to six inches up and that's where our first screw is gonna be now most people that screw these panels in um, screw them into the lows and I call this the low because this is where the water is going to run off of the roof this is the high and this is where I screw my um, my panels is in the high because water is not going to sit here water is going to when it's raining water is going to bounce off of here and run off the roof down here so what we're going to do is we're going to start about six inches in and then we're going to go every two feet and we're going to put um, we're going to pre-drill holes so again I have all of the panels lined up you can see all eight panels are lined up and what i'm going to do is i'm going to pre-drill holes in the high so that i know that as long as my panels stay um, pretty straight that basically my screw lines are going to be completely lined up without any real effort um, rather than doing it panel by panel all the way across your screw lines are going to end up doing like that so we're going to take an eighth inch drill bit and we're going to drill through um, every single one of these except for this one. I'm not going to drill through this one um, because this one, when it laps over, will already have a hole in it. So I don't want to put a hole in our leading edge, um, if that makes any sense. So I'll kind of show you what I'm going to do here and uh, get it laid out. All right, I got my holes laid out. Um, and what I did is this one's at four inches. Then I went to two more feet. So 24 plus four is 28. That's at 28. This one's at 52. Um, this one's at six feet plus four inches. And this one's at a uh, hundred. Yeah, eight feet plus four. So that one's at a hundred. Now, when you're doing this, there's no need to have screw holes way up high at the moment because when you put your ridge over the top, your ridge um, may end up hitting on those screws. So you want to avoid the top, I don't know, at least foot of the panel. Otherwise those screws just may end up messing with your ridge um, when you put it on. And also the way that I do my ridge is I screw my ridge down through the highs with like a two inch screw. So it'll actually go through the ridge, through the panel and into the decking. So now what we have is an eighth inch drill bit. Um, and I bought some specifically for this because when you're drilling through eight panels, these are really easy to break. Um, but I would not recommend going any bigger than eighth of an inch because um, the screws, depending on what kind of screws or nails, whatever you're using to, um, to actually um, nail this down, eighth inch is about as big as you wanna go, moral of that story. So I'm gonna drill through all eight of these. Um, and again, 
in every one of these you can see i have it marked here 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 and here and then this one i did not mark because when the next panel laps over which i'll show you there will already be a hole on that end of the panel when it sits here so there's really no need to drill a hole there we really want to let the drill bit do the work you don't want to push too hard because it's going to end up crooked or it's going to end up breaking on you so we're just letting the drill bit do the work we're not pushing very hard ah there we go we broke one it's really easy to do all right we have all of our holes pre-drilled um you can see we have the four inch ones, the 28, the 52s, the whatever's and the 100. Um, now we are ready to put our closures on. And what these do, like I said earlier, is they go at the bottom of the panel along the, um, the eave flashing there. And they just close off with this foam um, so that critters can't get in there. Um, so, by drilling these holes, we know that our first one's at four inches. So with an inch and a half overhang, that um, closure, here's the hole, that closure should be somewhere right in here. Um, and we're gonna have to put that on up there. Um, but drilling these holes is a huge time saver. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of um, where you're putting screws and stuff like that. And when you're on the roof, you know exactly where to put them. Um, they're gonna stay assuming that these panels stay consistent and everything like that um your your lines of screws are going to stay pretty dang straight which is a huge time saver so i hope that helped you um and if this video is helping you guys um leave me a thumbs up and a comment and uh subscribe if you haven't so we're ready now to put our first panel on so what we need to do these are sticky on one side you can see got some like glue adhesive on there and what we're going to need to do is we're going to put these on to the um, eave trim there you can see what I did um, I bumped it up I don't know three eighths half of an inch right there and stuck it down and then our panel is gonna go directly over this and then with an inch and a half overhang this would bring us to about two our first screws are gonna be somewhere right in here um, so we're gonna get our first panel on this is kind of difficult for me to film um, and install so I'm working and doing my best here so All right, there you can see our panel. Um, I have one screw in it. I left, I don't know, a little over an inch. And now I'm also, I'm using, a, these are two inch screws. So this panel is about three quarters of an inch. So we should be getting, with the shingles, we should be getting good deck penetration. Um, and then with these, when you're in the highs like this, you gotta really be careful how tight you fasten these screws you want it tight enough that this washer seals 
but not so tight that it smashes the um, the rib. So now we need to try to figure out if we're square. Um, I don't care if it's a new building, an old building, what it is, nothing is built perfectly square. Um, so our flashing on the eave here, which is what goes on um, after we're done with the roof, will cover up any, you know, within reason, any um, areas that are out of square. But by leaving only one screw in there, I have room to adjust this and, uh, you know, make sure that we are, we are square. So that's our next goal is to make sure that we're square. All right, now we've determined that we're square. Um, there's lots of ways you can do that. You can use an actual square. Um, one thing you can do is just, and it's not gonna tell you perfectly if you're square, but you can measure from that side to the edge of the panel at the bottom and the top and just determine um, whether you're maybe not necessarily square, but you'll come out even on that end. Um, the other way to do it is, and you can look this up, I'm not gonna explain this um, in detail, but you can do like the three, four, five method. So you measure up three feet here, four feet here, and if it's square, it should be exactly five feet from there to there um, on that angle. And it's just, it's geometry. You can look that up on Google if you really want to get technical with it, but uh, we're determined that we're square. Um, you guys need to be extremely careful and make sure that you're being safe when you're doing this. Um, if you feel uncomfortable, you know, maybe you need scaffolding, maybe you need to nail boards into the roof to get up onto the roof. In this case, this roof is a little steep, but I am able to walk it. Um, so now, basically, we need to finish nailing or screwing down this panel, and then we're just going to work our way across until we are done um, so I'm gonna get to uh, screwing this panel and we'll get the next one up here Well, there you can see um, I did not screw in the edge holes over there because we're gonna have a big 90 degree piece that goes over the top of that and um, those screws there will just get in the way now if this is gonna take you a while um, that will end up flapping in the wind and you may want to screw that down temporarily um, but in this case I'm not too worried about it so we have three ribs screwed now when the next one comes over that edge right there is going to go over the top of this right here so we will get screws into this it's just going to be when that next panel laps over the top so we will have about 24 screws per panel when we're all said and done with the ridge because the ridge will be another four um screws up into the top there um so you're going to have about 24 screws per panel and uh that is a lot of holding power um, and these things will last a long time so i'm gonna kind of i guess put you guys into a time lapse mode here and uh you guys can watch me put up the panels on this side
Well, there you have it. I still have one tiny little sliver of a piece over there that needs to get uh, installed yet. I'll have to cut that down. It's about, I don't know, an eight or 10 inch piece. So you guys can see these screw lines, how nice and straight they are. How nice and straight everything is. And that's a product of us drilling the holes and laying all this out so we don't have any guesswork when we get up onto the roof. Um, in real time, I know you guys saw time lapse, but in real time, that took me about an hour. Um, not including this first panel. So this first panel you guys saw me install, but the next six took me about an hour. Um, and here you can see what the closures look like. You can see them in there and how they close all this off. And then here you can see how the panel overlaps. Um, there's just one rib that overlaps right here. And that's why we didn't drill holes in this side of the panel is because we already had a hole here. So when we um, the odds of those lining up perfectly is slim to none for one, but um, this hole allows us to know where to, to drill. And then with these, um, with these um, pull barn screws, they go right through the tin pretty easily. So you can see that uh, it's a little bit off square on this side, but on that side over there, it turned out really nice. All right, so we had one panel left over from this side over here and it already had my screw layout and everything my length and my screw layout figured out so i just put that on the top of the next side i cut it the next side the panels are the same length 114 inches i cut all those just like i did and this was already laid out so i just drilled more holes in it you can see this is the side that we started on that you watched you can see how nice and straight those screw rows stayed and this is our other side um, everything's turning out really good. Um, you can see that I have, I don't know, a six inch piece here and a six inch piece here that I need to get on. And I need to do my flashing on the rake, which is a 90 degree piece here. Um, but I'm running out of memory on my card and I have an appointment that I have to get to. The rest of the roof here, what we did so far is pretty easy and pretty self-explanatory. The more tricky parts are the parts that are yet to come. Um, so if you guys have made it this far in the video, I appreciate that and uh, you're obviously interested. You're, gonna, you're definitely gonna wanna wait and see um, how we do the rake flashing and the ridge and finish off these uh, panels on this side. So um, we're gonna go to a little commercial break and we will get right into that. It's actually been a few days. Um, so i have my rake metal installed over there um, we know that we have to finish this panel so when i take measurements of the panels i take from right here not including the overlap and i determine that we need six inches and six inches is going to bring us about uh about an inch short of uh the edge here the next thing i did if you guys remember that these were hanging off about two feet so i cut these where they are about an inch um overhanging both of them so what we got to do now is we need to cut down our panel um, and then we can put on our rake metal here i'm going to show you um, how to cut it um, i i do this fairly often i don't do metal roofs every day but i am a roofer so i do this fairly often and i have some shears you can see right here these are called a double cut or a sheet metal shear um, these are pretty cheap. I don't know. Maybe I don't have a really, really nice one. This one's probably like 50 bucks, but for the amount I use it, um, it saves me a lot of time. So what this does is it's actually going to cut our panel. So we need six inches. And like I said, I measure from this point over six inches is going to leave me right about here. So now all we have to do is cut our panels and both sides were the same. So I need six inches on each side. So we're going to cut our two pieces. All right, there's our two pieces, one for each side. Six inches there, six inches there, and 
cutting them with that shear makes it a lot easier. Um, you can do it with a snip or a grinder or maybe even a circular saw. There's lots of ways you can do it. Um, this is the easiest for what I have. And uh, doing it with a snip kind of sucks, to be honest. Um, anyways, those pieces need to go up there. I'm not going to show you guys how that goes because if you've been following the video, all we have to do screw this one high down to the last panel there and then um, our flashing is going to cover and we'll get some more screws on this end when i when we put our flashing on um, but that's pretty much it so that'll finish off the roof i'm going to get those put on quick and then uh, we'll get to the rake flashing all right this part's going to be pretty hard for me to film um, by myself so i'll kind of walk you through the steps as best i can and film it and then uh, i'm going to actually do it and then I'll show you what I did. Um, it's just going to be really hard for me to show you and do it at the same time. Seeing as I'm on a ladder 20 feet in the air and uh, trying to do a rough and make a video. All right, so this is our rake flashing. And uh, you can see it's just a 90 degree piece. Um, we're gonna put this piece on There's no cutting I mean you can if you want you can put tabs and stuff up here, but it's really unnecessary um, Because your ridge is gonna go over the top But uh, I'm gonna get this set at the top Here you can see what the piece looks like. Uh, it's a 90 degree piece. This piece goes back onto the roof and uh, this part here goes down the fascia. So doing this myself, I got one screw there. I'm just gonna, I'm using the same lines and um, same screw pattern. Now I'm gonna go down there to the end and make sure everything's all good down. So the first thing we gotta do is right here where we left this an inch long, we have to angle it so that this can come up tight to it. And uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just using regular tin snips. We're gonna get a screw in the top. And then we're gonna cut this. I'm gonna cut this part flush with the panel. There's lots of ways that you can do this. Um, you can bend tabs, you can caulk it, you can, there's a hundred different ways to do it. Um, this is the easiest way and the most beginner friendly way, I guess. So we cut this right here, flush with the panel to the 90 degree edge. And then um, what I do is I just cut it kind of on an angle here. Back. And then we'll put a screw down here too. And then we're just gonna continue to screw that piece. We're gonna screw it everywhere that the panel is screwed on the top and the fascia side. And then we're gonna, we'll get the other side, I'll show you that. 
I'm gonna cut this back just a little bit. It's a little too long. There we go, that's perfect. Yeah, I would say, I don't know, another good hour. That ridge is gonna suck with the pollen all on the panels and everything. It's gonna be slippery as hell up there. Um, I have a it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just send me an invoice and then I'll take care of you. Okay. Sound good? Sounds good. All right, that sun is pretty brutal. It's kind of hard to see, but I got a screw at the bottom. Um, I still gotta get a screw here. But this is how I cut them. You know, I cut it flush with the panel here. And then uh, this is where you wanna make sure that this is nice and tight. And then I just cut that on an angle from where it left off down to there. You can leave these long. I see a lot of people leave these long. I think it just looks bad because you can, this isn't colored on this side. It's just gray or white. And uh, so I wanna try to eliminate as much of that being seen as possible. Like I said, you guys can bend tabs, you can caulk this, you can, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I'm just showing you the most user-friendly way to do it. Um, and if you have a better way of doing it, do it your way or leave me a comment and maybe uh, somebody else could teach me something. But this is gonna do the job that we want. And uh, it closes off and looks pretty, pretty nice. Again, I, I told you this is real hard to film. So we had this one, we ran it up long um, and then these two come to a peak here and then when these overlap You're just gonna draw a line from here to there and cut that and then this gets screwed and uh, That's the finished product right there All the trees uh, just popped the leaves and there's pollen all over the panels but on a metal roof like this with this pitch walking on it's virtually impossible anytime um, so try to avoid that at all costs. Um, if you're doing, you know, less of a pitch, you can definitely walk on it, but I don't know what pitch this is, but there's no way I'm walking on it. Not without, uh, I don't know, some sort of special shoes or something. But so now we have, we have to do our ridge and um, we have to put our closures. These are the opposite of what was down there. So these are gonna go like this over the panel now what i do and i'll do this on a steeper pitch you can do this on a lesser pitch too but we need to figure out where our ridge is going to go so what i do is i just have a sharpie um, we know the ridge is going to go basically like that um, and then what we need to do is i'm just going to mark the edges just a small little bit on all of them and this you know you don't need to make a, a big mark but that's going to show me where the edge of my ridge is going to go now this is going to help me in two ways this is going to help me line up my closures so that they are not seen and when I get a, you know, a, I think the ridge is 10 or 12 feet long, um, I'm gonna know exactly where I wanna screw that ridge. Um, because the ridge that I got is not designed for a steeper pitch. So this piece I actually bent by hand to make it fit the pitch. And then when I put the full piece of ridge on, I'll be able to line up with those little black lines there. So we're gonna go through and mark. We'll mark our pieces. And then we're gonna put our closures on. You guys gotta hit the thumbs up. If you guys know, if you guys know how to do this stuff, just imagine doing all this by yourself and filming a video. That takes skill right there. Um, so hit the thumbs up. Now we're gonna put these closures on and um, we're basically just going to continue that all the way across the roof 
Then we're gonna get down, we're gonna bring up our ridge. And by doing this, we're just preparing for that ridge so that we don't have to do it all at once on the roof. It's gonna make life a lot easier that way. Now where it's, whoops. Now where it's long right here, we're just gonna pinch this off. And there you can see um, essentially the last step. Now I'm holding it about a half an inch up from my marks. I don't want it to be right on the edge. So we're gonna just continue that all the way across on both sides. Well, there you can see all of the closures are on. Now I'm gonna bring up my ridge um, and I have everything lined up and marked out so I can just put the ridge down without really guessing. I don't have to worry about fishing these underneath and uh, makes it a lot easier. I mean, it, you're preparing to make it easier on yourself, kind of like doing dr pre-drilling the screw holes. Um, so that's how I do it. If it was a lesser pitch, this would be a lot easier um, and I may do it just a slightly different way, but because it's steep and I can't walk on it once the metal's on, um, this is the best way that I know. We can see our ridge, it's pretty straight. Um, I didn't snap any lines or anything. I just used that piece and followed. And here you can see how the closures work. So the closures close all that off. And again, I held those up a little bit and I'm putting my screws, you know, just below them right there. Now we need one more piece. The piece is gonna go from here to here. We want it to overlap a little bit so we're gonna get a measurement for that and then I'll show you exactly close up how this one goes. Just putting those screws right through the high and uh, on every high we're gonna do it. Stayed pretty straight, looks pretty good. I didn't fall on it and dent it. It does have a couple oil cans in it, but like I said, that's from the, this ridge is kind of a universal ridge and it's built and bent for like a 412 pitch. So we're over bending it a little bit. And then you can see on the end, we just push this down to our rake piece, which is right down here. It's hard to see with the ladder in the way, but um, we just put it right down and then I have to screw right here too yet um, to hold that down tight and right here. And uh, that's pretty much it. 
So if you guys have questions, um, leave them down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, I have lots of other roofing videos and how-to videos like this, um, all different kinds. So if you go into my channel, um, subscribe to the channel and then uh, go into some of the playlists and watch some of the other videos you might find interesting. I'll leave a couple other ones linked here at the end um, for you guys to choose and, uh, and go ahead and watch. I appreciate you for watching. Um, again, hit the like button if you can. This video took a long time to make, a long time to edit, and uh, cost me a few hours on this job and some